Hello and welcome to part five of building a beach buggy with me, Neil. Um, before we get into the work stuff, I've got to say again, just the biggest thank you to everybody that's watched these videos so far, um, subscribed to the channel, liked, shared, all that stuff. Um, for only having four videos up, um, got 900 subscribers and I think about 19,000 views, which is just, pff, that's, I, I wasn't ever expecting to get that. So the fact that the fact that we gained that many in such a short period of time, that means the world to me. So thank you, every single one of you. Um, please carry on doing what you're doing. Share it on Facebook, Instagram, whatever else you use. Tell your mates if they're into this sort of thing. Um, yeah, again, just a huge thank you. Um, not very good at the self-promotion stuff, so that's that's all I'll do on that. Um, let's get down to the work. What are we gonna do in this episode? Um, we get to weld the frame head on in this episode, so that's where your front axle mounts. That's obviously a pretty major step, um, quite an important one as well, because we've got to get everything all jigged up and straight and true and everything else. Um, we're going to weld on the Napoleon's hat panel on top of that. Um, we've got the little outrigger jobbies on the back of the chassis where the, the floor pan sits on. Um, they've probably got a proper name, but I don't know it. Um, you're going to get to finally see the body shell in this episode, so that's pretty exciting because it's, yeah, it's, it's very, very cool. So stick around if you're interested in seeing that. Um, back to the work. Um, what are we gonna do? We'll pick up where we left off, which was we just boxed in the underside of the chassis. So the next step is to put the frame head on. Um, you know the drill by now. Weld through primer, plonk the two bits together, weld it all together. So let's get going with some of this stuff and build a beach buggy. Okay, we're, we're in position. Just spent probably two hours lining everything up to make sure it's all bang on. So just to prove it, we got we zeroed out on the uh, on the back there. Obviously, I've just skimmed across the top of that with a file just to clean any loose rust off. And on the front, we are well, 0.1 of a degree. I'm pretty sure we can live with that. It was yeah, fluctuating between zero and one. We can certainly live with that. So we know that is parallel to that. I've run a string line across the top to make sure that we're clocked right in that orientation. And here I've just put some, some bits of bolt in the lathe and machined them to a point. So we are 1780 on that side. And 1780 on this side. I've also measured diagonally from here to here to make sure that we're not, you know, on the wonk like a parallelogram. So we're not going to get much better than that. Quick, going to tack everything in place there, lock that frame head in position. Once that is tacked in place, it physically can't go anywhere, and we should be good. Who needs a chassis table? Whoops. Okay, now we're we're upside down again. We've plug welded all the way around the around the top, so this frame head is now connected. That's its, you know, final posi position dictated now. So if you're not already bored of watching me do plug welds, we've got some more to do in the bottom. So they will obviously connect this lower sheet part to the to this big beefy thick plate that we've put on the bottom as that extends inside the frame head to about there. So this thing should be super strong. Lovely 
stuff. Also, while we're upside down, we'll get a, a nice big fat MIG weld across that join there. There we go. Got a big fat MIG weld across there, our plug welds across there. Um, I've had a few people ask me what what welder I use, um, even though you know there's probably better people to ask. I'm not a qualified welder, but it's a Kempe Minarch Evo 170, and that was uh, 18 volts and 6.2 meters per minute of 0.8 mil wire with a CO2 argon mixture for the gas. So, nice, nice and simple setup. No need to overcomplicate things. Now for this weld around the top, I'm going to keep moving the, the chassis around, sort of rotating it, because it's, especially with MIG welding, it's always nicer to weld downward if you can. Welding vertically or upside down is a, a bit of a nightmare. So, anytime you can lay it flat like that, makes your life a lot easier, makes for a, a much nicer weld. Cool, that's the frame head welded on. So, a bit of a good old weld through primer. And the next job is to get that on. But even though, if you go all the way back to, I think it was in the first episode, you see me bashing this thing six ways from Sunday, it still doesn't fit particularly well. You know, you see this line here, it's just, it's too straight, it doesn't fit properly. So, we're going to have to start chopping this thing about and do some sort of relief cuts and whatnot in there to get that fitting a lot better than it does see that's not still not great infinitely better than what it was but still not good enough so let's start dissecting it right we're clamped in position there we finally got it fitting you know pretty good after plenty of beating over the anvil up there and cutting these slots in it and everything to to close all these gaps up you should you know you can see there how much of a gap you've got to fill up so that really highlights how how badly these things fit if you were to take it out the box and try and weld it to a car it just doesn't fit so it takes a lot of mucking about to get it there but getting it there is what we're doing so now we're gonna weld up all these gaps get it fitting super nice and we can weld up these holes here for the because that's obviously a left hand drive um, master cylinder hole so we need to transfer that over to that side because they don't do these in right hand drive for some reason and uh, yeah we'll be another step closer now that we're removed from the car you can really see you know that's, that's quite a gap to fill up there most of it will get away with just a, a series of tack welds and then grinding it smooth to fill up those gaps they're, they're not really big enough to warrant putting a, a filler piece in but gaps like that, where it's, you know, we're probably about half an inch there at the widest part. So just cut a small piece of um, piece of steel, same thickness, so we can weld that in there, grind out all the welds, um, and put all this work in to just making it fit like it should have fit in the first place. But as I've said a dozen times, that's the, that's the, the battle with working with these reproduction parts. They're just not as good as the original ones, and they take a lot of mucking about, a lot of fettling to... to to get them to just appear standard. So next time you see a car at a car show and think that, oh yeah, that's just standard, remember that somebody has probably had to battle with dozens, if not hundreds, of these small little pieces like this, just to get things to, to look how they should. I 
after lots of grinding, welding and bashing, we've got the thing fitting actually how it should now. So that fits on there, lovely. Um, but what I need to do is convert it from left hand drive to right hand drive. So I'm going to have to weld up these holes here. And first job is going to be use the old one to line it up on the top there and then transfer these these holes to there and another thing is these little tubes which go sort of in between in there so that when you when you bolt up the master cylinder um, it doesn't sort of squish this in you know it stops it from crushing um, I had some of those and I put them somewhere so safe that I still don't know where they are so the amount of time I spent looking for them I just made another set on the lathe and it literally took five minutes so I should have done that anyway and guaranteed I'm going to find the other ones in about 10 minutes time so that's the way it goes try to be organized and sometimes you're a bit too organized Cool, so that's that drilled. We've got our little tubes, just, just tacked them in place there. Normally, the, the way they do it is they put a bigger hole on one side than the other, so you just sort of pass them through. But I thought, seeing as I've got it in pieces, they're a permanent fixture, I'll put them in there, just tack them in, never need to worry about them again. Next job is to fill up the holes where the, where the old one was. Now, a, a good trick for doing this that I find is to, you know, if you're welding up holes this big, it's kind of, it's a bit big to just be, if you just keep tacking it with the welder, the weld basically just falls through to the other side. So what I like to do is clamp a piece of um, like a non-ferrous metal. So obviously this is steel, ferrous. So something non-ferrous like aluminium or brass even, something like that. Clamp it into the backside nice and tight. And then the weld will obviously take to the steel, but it won't take to that. So you can just sort of fill up these holes Take the, uh, take the aluminium away and the backside is nice and flat without a load of weld flowing through. Um, these sorts of holes, that's about the limit for the size that I'd like to do just by, by tacking it up. This big one there, obviously we need a, a filler piece to put in there. Um, and instead of me, you know, going to find a piece of steel the right thickness and drawing a circle and cut it out and everything, we've got these handy bits, which obviously are just from over there. So I'm just gonna plop those in there weld around those and then we've just got one little hole to weld up in the middle, sand it smooth and uh, it will look like it was always meant to be that way. It would be a lot easier if they made them in right hand drive but here we are, not a problem. go after a bunch of finishing with the grinder you can see we you know can't really see where we've been there um, took the opportunity to try and straighten the panel out a bit as well because it's got all these horrible sort of stretch marks in it from where it was um, you know stamped over a form when it was first made um, yeah you can see what I mean there so 
not that you're ever really going to see this panel but just try my best to get a little bit of that out um, and any other minor blemishes that are still there by the time this thing's got a few coats of primer on it and a few coats of paint you'll never even see stuff like that so it's easy to agonize over stuff like that but you're never going to see it when it's done um, for where the part's going to live it's more than good enough right we're on for the final time i reckon i must have had this thing on and off 50 60 times easy just trying to you know get it to fit as good as possible we finally got there measured everything up measured from my bolt holes all the way back to the to the rear torsion spring housing to make sure everything is straight as possible we're clocked right in this direction we got a bit of a clamper armor going on with all manner of different clamps holding this thing in place so what i'm going to do now is just run around the whole perimeter tacking it every few inches and i can take all these clamps off finish weld it and then never have to think about it again can't wait That's us welded all the way round now. As you'll see, I opted for um, the series of small tacks approach just because, like I said before, the stuff is pretty thin. Tacks is definitely the way to go without blasting holes in everything. So that's us on there. Right, by the time there's some primer and some paint on top of those, that's gonna look more than respectable. It's a hell of a lot better than the ones that came on the frame head that I bought anyway. But there we go. That should be the bulk of our welding at the front of the chassis done. Now we've got to move on to the back and get these bad boys in. So we need to get those in there first, then we can get our floor pans to sit on top of that. And then we're pretty much done with it. But before I weld these in, um, just got a couple of holes to weld up, which are, I believe these were for uh, brake pipes and stuff like that, which, you know, obviously, as you know, we're, we're running those through the, uh, through the through the spine itself so we don't need to worry about those um it's exactly the same process for welding these up as the uh the part that you've just seen me do so i'll spare you the boringness of seeing that and uh with a little bit of video magic we'll uh just do this that was easy wasn't it see you'd never know apart from all the mess everywhere but pretend you didn't see that that's those welded up let's get them welded on okay we're we're in position there we're tacked in place i'm being careful here and i've just very lightly tacked it in a couple of spots because i really want to trial fit the body on it to make sure it fits as well as possible because if these needs to move you know back or forward a tiny bit i'd be pretty annoyed if i welded them all the way up and then discovered it would be better if they moved um, I've left this end sort of loose for now, so we've got a little bit of wiggle room. So the plan is, we're going to jump on the old, uh, the trusty iron horse there, go for a spin to work, get the big van, drive it back, put that in the back of the big van, then drive it back to work where the body is, then plonk it on top and see if it fits. Got it? Here we are, 
This is where I spend most of my time. This is where I earn a living as a sign writer. That's my, my little business there. And you might have noticed, oh, what have we just walked past? Hello. Oh, hello. Every day, this thing teases me, looking at it, going, come on, hurry up, finish me, build me, drive me. I'm working on it. Look at that. See, this colour is stunning enough indoors, but when you take it out in the sun, I'll just take one of my seats out there to show you then. Once the sun hits it, it goes absolutely ballistic. I don't know if the video is picking that up as much as it is in real life, but it is twinkling like a mad thing. Can't wait to see this thing in the sun. There it is, in all its glory. Honestly, the, the craftsmanship in this thing is a testament to, to Rob at East Coast Buggies and his attention to detail, because my dad has been, oh, he's retired now. He a, was a boat builder, fiberglasser for most of his life, um, and he's very critical of other people's work. He's looked this thing up and down and does not have a bad thing to say. He's uh, incredibly complimentary at how, how neatly made the thing is. Love it. Every now and again, I just take the cover off it just as a, a little treat, just to remind myself what's coming up. So we got two bucket seats as well. And also a fiberglass hardtop roof, which is super cool. You see, it's got this sort of leather texture in it. At some point, somebody obviously built the roof for one of these things, wrapped it in leather, then took a mold off of it so that the, the mold has this sort of leather impression inside it. So this is, this is just white gel coat. So it gives the illusion of it being wrapped in leather. Proper cool. But that's the really cool bit. Yeah. Okay, here's the bit where I've got to climb inside the body, stick my feet out the bottom like Fred Flintstone and carry the thing onto the chassis there, see how it fits. I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, that's where we're going. We've got a few clamps and bits of wood and whatnot just to hold things in place where, uh, you know, it doesn't weigh much, this thing. So all you have to do is move one thing into alignment and it moves the other corner out. So got it all fit in, literally perfect. I couldn't be happier with it. It's, I'm feeling quite smug because every measurement that I made is bang on. So can't complain at that. These ends here that we left loose, we've got those in the right position and just put a little, a little Sharpie mark on it so we know exactly where that's going. So now I can put the floor pans in, confident that everything is exactly where it should be. So yeah, feeling good. And just really happy to see this thing without the cover on it. Look at it, it's mental. It's like a dodger. Can't wait to see this out in the sun. Dazzle some motorists. Yeah. Right. Let's pack it away, put it back to bed, chassis back in the van, go home and weld in some floor pans. Woohoo! Right, we're back home. Just dragged her back into the shed. So I marked my back and forth while we were at work. Little sharpie mark there, line that up, tapped it in there, tap that in there. So these are locked in place now. Time to finish welding. Then we can put some floor pans in. I'm excited about that. It's a massive step. Let's do some welding. Once again, we're going to use the series of small tacks method for doing this, just because this stuff's nice and thick, but this is pretty thin. So 
you try and blast it all up in one go, all that's going to happen is it's going to melt this piece to pieces, make a huge mess. So just tack, 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 and I've got to try and be as consistent as I go. There you can see we're, we're fairly neat with what we're doing there. By the time that's got some paint on it, that'll look lovely. You see we've got a, a little bit of a gap here. So what I'm gonna do there is just heat this up with the, with the map gas torch, get in there with something sharp, corner of a bit of wood or a chisel or something like that, bash that in and try and close in that gap as much as we can. Perfect. See what I've got there, a little bit of hardwood. Shake the end. Absolute piece of cake. Next. Right, that's those all welded in as far as they need to be. Um, on the top there, I've just welded it up and just blended it all over, smoothed it together. So it looks a bit scrappy now, but by the time that's all got a load of paint on it, that's gonna look like it was, like it was always that way. Uh, on the ends there, we've filled those holes up with weld and I flipped it over as well and welded around the underside of that as well. So these things are proper rock solid because obviously that's what supports the whole, the whole back end of the body. So next up, we've got to put those floor pans in, but that's a story for another day. Okay, that's the end of part five of building a beach buggy with me. Um, I think we've made some pretty good progress in this episode. We've welded the frame head on. That's obviously a huge step um, because that dictates where everything on the front end of the car goes. Uh, in the next episode, we've got another really big step coming up, which is welding in those two floor pan halves. So look forward to that. Um, there's gonna be a few more little odds and ends to do first, but we are getting very close to the day where we get to finally sandblast this chassis, clean it all up, prime it, paint it, and have a, you know, a spanking shiny looking chassis ready to start assembling into a, a giant sparkly gold oversized children's toy that we get to legally drive on the road looking like a great big pillock. So what could be better than that? Um, as I've said before, if you use Instagram, it's a good place to check it out for, for updates. My, my page is Neil of Steel with underscores in between. Um, by all means follow us on there if you like seeing you know you'll get sort of updates and stories and things of, of what's going on in my garage here before it makes it to the youtube video so if you like seeing into the future that's a good place to do it um in case you're wondering yes i did find those two little spaces a day after i actually needed them you know spent at least an hour looking for them and then five minutes making some more so don't need those um another thing worth mentioning um it, it Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, if we're at 900 subscribers now, if this thing gets to a thousand, then we'll have to do something special for that. That just, that, that blows my mind. Um, but instead of talking about the actual, the numbers, the most amazing thing to me is some of the comments I've been getting, um, messages, emails, that sort of thing, um, saying that I've inspired people to, you know, to either restore something, build something, or go out and buy the car that they wish they'd always had. Um, it just, that, that blows my mind that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing what I would be doing in my little shed uh, anyway, um, just by letting people into my little world with a camera and a YouTube account, um, getting messages from people on the other side of the world saying that I've inspired them. That is, that's just the most amazing thing imaginable, so. Thank you for all the kind words. Um, and yeah, speaking of inspiration, I hope I've inspired you to get out in the garage and make something. Or if you haven't got a garage, go clean your car, clean your bike. If it's got wheels and you're doing something productive with it and having fun with it, it's all good in my book. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on part six of building a beach buggy with me. See you later.